Hi there, and welcome to Plug and Guru's Power Review for Native Instruments FM8. My name is John Skippy Lemkul, and I'm going to be showing you Native Instruments FM8 today. It's going to be divided into two parts, this review. Part one is going to be an overview as well as tricks for the browser. And part two is going to be deep into programming, so you can follow along. If you don't have FM8, you've got to get the demo. There's a free, fully running demo from NativeInstruments.com. It only runs for 30 minutes. It comes with all 900 plus factory patches. So getting that demo is a great way to follow along with this review, because this is not just a normal tutorial or a normal review. This is a Skippy Power review. So we're going to show you all sorts of tricks and get your hands dirty. It's how you learn how things work by watching and doing. So all the music you're hearing, that's all created by me using patches I've created for Native Instruments FM8. And if you go to my website, PluginGuru.com, you can download 12 of those patches right now for free. And right below that is a link to get 60 more of my kick butt patches for only 30 bucks. So all through these episodes, all the music you're hearing is created using these patches that you're going to be able to get in your own hands. They work with the demo as well as with the full version of FM8. Because my goal is to plug you in with both inspiring sounds and deep knowledge. So let's not wait any longer. Let's get going. Check this out. Let me take on a real quick tour of FM8 from basic to more complex. And instead of a lot of synthesizer programming speak, I'm just going to show you what it sounds like. This is a very simple, basic, initialized patch. It's a single operator that is a sine wave. So I can show you some of the building blocks. Here's your envelope, and you can. We have the ability to change the frequency through a parameter called ratio. Because in FM, you're dealing with the ratio of different harmonics. Here's your list of waveforms to choose from. You can click and drag here too. There's an effects section we're going to go to, and you can add effects, really unique effects, like the, uh, it's called Psyche Delay because it has a pitch transposition for the delays. So you can do cool stuff like that. So that's one oscillator. Now let's go from one to six. And now we have. Now these are uh, Plugin Guru FM8 volume one patches. So they're gonna really show off the effects and everything. So I can talk to you about morph. Watch. I'm gonna use the little mini morph up here. And now you'll see that the whole program is changing. See how these blocks are changing their order? The ratios are changing, the waveforms are changing, so that you can go from one sound to a completely different sound. Huge, 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 huge. And it's just by moving around one thing with your mouse. And you can easily automate that into any sequencer. So let's go from six oscillators with no filtering two, six oscillators, now with filtering. And if you hit Z, all these six oscillators are being sent right over here to Z. Notice you've got panning down here. You can have separate panning, and it still is stereo panning going into the filter. Finally, let's go to FM. Look at this. You've got six oscillators plus the saturator being used, but only the saturator is the only thing coming down here to the output. Everything else is modulating poor little F oscillator. They're beating up on it, basically. And the end result is that F becomes a very complex sound. Nice big bass sound. Now, let's go to the Spectrum page and watch this. A and B are creating kind of a, a knock part of the bass sound. Now, I'm going to bring up the volume and look at the waveform. Watch how it changes. That's the power of FM and what makes FM unique from all the other forms of synthesis. Uh, subtractive, you're starting with something bright and you're using filters to bring it down to become a different sound or be just bright all the time if you want. FM is all about taking simple blocks and combining them and the end result is much more complex and much brighter. The 
browser is where you're going to be spending a lot of time when you first get FM8 to find sounds and to go through the sounds and see what is there. And unfortunately, it's not laid out as efficiently as it should be to help you out. So right off the bat, let's, let's set it up a little bit better, shall we? The FM8 folder is installed when FM8 is installed. And it includes three folders. The effects folder has 12 patches, which will set up the effect version of FM8. When you install the instrument version, it's also installing a uh, effect only version for adding to an audio track or to another instrument track. FM7 is all the factory patches that came with FM7, plus two banks, volume one and volume two, they called them, of support patches that they made. There's a lot of really great patches in here. And instruments is where you find the new patches that were made using the new features of FM8. That means these have the morph pad, the arpeggiator, and effects. Favorites, if you have a patch that you're playing, and you go, ooh, I love that sound. If you right click on it, you can say, add to my favorites. And this way you can go through all the folders and put together just your favorite patches from all these different folders and thousands of sounds and put them into one place called the favorites. Um, there's a location where sounds show up in your documents folder of your root users. So whoever you are, your documents, native instruments, shared content, sounds, and then FM8. That's where patches that you create you need to save them in this folder so that way they will show up when you click the little My Sounds folder. See how it shows the two plugin guru volumes? Just the same as it does here in the Finder. There's an option up here to uh, import SysX. Um, they also will be saved there automatically. Now we were talking about how it's not set up for finding things very easily. Modified is one column and rating is another column of useless information. Modified, who cares when the patch was made? And rating, you click on it and you can't even change it. So, if you right click or control click on modified, you can turn off that diamond by its name, and you can right click or control click on rating, get rid of that. Instead, let's add instrument and right click to add author. Now, there's a search that we're going to take a look at in a minute, but search searches all the folders. What's cool is if you want to just search the instruments folder of new FM8 stuff, you can hit instruments now, and boom. Now you have all the mallet instruments, all this, it's all, or, and it's buggy, by the way, so you might have to click up here a couple times. The other thing I want to show you is author. This, this is awesome because I love to study other programmers because we all have our own signature way of making sounds. And there's some really good programmers that worked on FM7 and FM8. And by hitting the author tab, you can now search one particular programmer and then go through all of his, well, look, it's all buggy again. This is something that they didn't release from the factory this way. I don't know why. It's so much more useful, but now you know. Now, if you're going to search for sounds, you want to search everywhere. Right here where it says sounds, you click, and all of a sudden it becomes active. You could say, I want a bass. I want analog. Let's listen to some analog basses. And I want it to be kind of distorted, and I want it to be kind of bright and dark. Oh, no such thing. <laughs> Can't be bright and dark, I guess, but fat. There we go. Now right here is your arpeggio light. It's stored with the patch. And so look to see if it's on. And then you can go through and. Now all of the skippy patches. I put a three letter little short of the abbreviated category at the very beginning of my names. So I could find them from these columns and everywhere else. So then you can. Now that's a bass. Let me tell you, that's, that's good. But there's another trick to this. Normally when you're choosing patches, you're double clicking or you go up and down and you hit enter. And I have another trick. If you hit the power switch one time and it only works with FM8, it doesn't work with Absinthe 4, it doesn't work with Massive, but now arrow up and down, change programs. So there's a nice trick for you. 